On September 13, 1917, the Carlisle Evening Herald announced that a big rubber company had decided to locate in Carlisle. The firm was the Carlisle Tire and Rubber Company, whose first president and general manager was entrepreneur Charles S. Moomy. Moomy had arrived in town with $500 in cash, $4,000 worth of machinery, and a contract with Montgomery Ward for the production of inner tubes for automobile tires. Little did he know that this decision would lay the foundation for the world's largest commercial roofing manufacturer. With World War I raging and the American automobile industry rapidly expanding to meet both military and civilian demand, the Carlisle Tire and Rubber Company lived up to early expectations. Over the decades to come, Carlisle's business grew and shrank with the economy. It was during these years that the company developed its culture for constant innovation. In the early 1950s, in response to Western farmers' requests for flexible irrigation pipes, Carlisle pioneered butyl single-ply elasticmeric sheeting, the predecessor of today's EPDM. Carlisle discovered that a large untapped market existed for agricultural-related rubber sheeting products, so they began selling single-ply butyl membranes for lining irrigation ditches, rainwater catchment basins, and salt pits. Additional applications for single-ply sheeting soon became apparent, from vapor barriers to foundation waterproofing to haystack covers. In 1961, Carlisle took single-ply to the next level by using it as a roofing material, installing the product on a section of O'Hare International Airport in Chicago. Over the next few years, Carlisle's single-ply rubber roofing continued to be specified as the preferred roofing, foundation liner, or water barrier application for some of the newest and largest buildings in the nation. It was during this time period that Carlisle switched from butyl membranes to its newly developed EPDM membrane, and since then, the rest is history. By the early 1970s, Carlisle's reputation for manufacturing superior quality membranes continued to grow ushering in a period of unprecedented growth. By 1979, EPDM was so popular that the lead time for deliveries extended to 26 weeks and contractors stood in line to get the product. By 1981, Carlisle's EPDM roofing business eclipsed its tire and tube business, leading the company to create an independent roofing division named Carlisle Syntec. Throughout the 80s, innovation continued to be a focal point for Carlisle, with the introduction of its first reinforced roofing membrane and the first white EPDM roofing systems. During the 1990s and 2000s, Carlisle introduced TPO single-ply roofing membranes, EPDM membranes with factory-applied tape, and fleece-backed membranes. The advent of the green building movement led to sustainable innovations including roof gardens, energy-efficient insulation products, and low VOC adhesives and sealants for roofs and ductwork. More recent Carlisle developments include adhesiveless systems that utilize Velcro brand securable solutions with fleece-backed membranes, TPO and PVC with top protective film, self-adhering TPO and EPDM, low VOC aerosol contact adhesives and primers, liquid flashing, and pressure-sensitive PVC products. In addition to in-house innovations, the company also expanded and diversified its product offering through acquisitions. CCM now has divisions that provide spray foam, silicone, and acrylic coatings, and metal roof and wall panels. The small tire and rubber company started by Charles Moomy back in 1917 has changed a lot over the last century, but one constant has remained, a focus on innovation. For more than 100 years, Carlisle has actively sought out creative ways to solve customers' problems and fill their needs. Today, the company is hard at work on more innovations which are sure to reshape the construction landscape.